Welcome back to Introduction to Programming. And in chapter 8, we're going to see a little bit more about the classes that we've seen in the past chapters. Um, so we're looking at a few more informations that are quite important to understand the chapters that follow. Now we'll start with an example. And the example is going to use the same cat example that we already had, which, as you can see here, is a lot of code, but still quite uh, simple in terms of uh, in terms of the way it's constructed. So we have here the cat.h file, which in which we basically say there is an instance called cat, which we define uh, to be a, cl uh, a class with some pr uh, public um, members and some private members. Those are mostly data members, where here you have basically functions. And in the implementation of these functions, we implemented two types of constructors, so the default constructor and a constructor where you could give the name of the cat. And depending on the mood of the cat, which is also one of its data members, which can be sleepy, hungry, or angry, you could then uh, let the cat speak in a different way. That was the thing that we've already seen, that we quickly programmed, and where the main function is basically um, just an illustration of how to use this class. You basically, you just include the header file for this class, and then you can define a certain name for our cat. We call it Frisky, for instance. Then we uh, instantiate an object for our class, which we also call Frisky, uh, with this name. So instead of using the default constructor, we use a constructor that takes the, the string or the, the array of characters in this case, because we don't use strings um, as such, and we set the mood to sleepy and let it then speak. And in that case, it will say mu instead of meow or his. So that was the thing that we already saw last time. Now, one additional comment that you could make here of many is that certain things could be implemented a little bit more logically. For instance, the age of a cat is constantly changing. However, it would be a little bit easier if we, whenever we define a cat, for instance, Frisky, it would be nicer to have it, uh, Frisky's uh, birth year, for instance. So in that case, what we can do is actually set its uh, birth year, which can be an int, or let's make it an unsigned integer. So the year of birth is what we are going to store here instead of the age. And that will make it, I think, a little bit easier uh, because that is something that we don't have to change. But if we don't have to change it, it actually would make sense also to have this as a constant. Right? So this is something that we could implement and where we basically, when we define a cat, we basically say this cat is then, for instance, in the constructor already, um, uh, a certain age. So uh, we can basically say that um, the age is in that case, or the, the, the birth date is in that case 2017, for instance. Um, or if you have the default constructor that it's set to, uh, to a certain number. Now this would be the way to use it. We just have to implement it now. The nice thing about having this const over here, the fact that we make this a constant in, in our class, means that just at the, uh, the, const the, the constructing point, so when we construct this frisky, this cat called frisky, we set its birth year and we don't allow this to be changed anymore because once we create a cat, it is created at a birth year and we afterwards don't uh, change it anymore. Now, how do we do this? How can this be um, done? Now, this is a little bit uh, um, a tricky. We'll have to, in the birth year, also there, have to implement this because uh, also there we have to say what the birth year is. So let's do here unsigned int, um, and we call that birth year with a capital Y, for instance. So here, in this case, um, we want to have a birth year to be defined along with the name of the cat. If we, however, have a default constructor, we also have to add a birth year here. Now, what will happen here in this case if we say it's birth year equals zero or over here when we say unsigned int birth year 
and then we basically have to say here at its birth year equals birth year we're going to have a problem because those are constants you can't just assign a value to a constant and this is where um, it gets really tricky so what uh, in that case C++ provides for you is some, is some uh, capability of uh, not initializing or not assigning um, a const a value because that we know in C and C++ con uh, syn uh, syntax is not possible it will generate definitely an error because this is a constant and we assign it a value or over here this is a constant and over here we assign it a value so in order to prevent that in C++, you can over here initialize values straight away, not in the statement or in the compound statements uh, of the constructor, but straight away at the definition. So what we do there is we say for a cat, we have a particular data member, which we call its birth year. And that's this one over here. And we can immediately give it a certain Oops, certain parameter and this way we don't have to do this which will generate an error but we can do this immediately at the definition time almost and that will allow our compiler to do this before we even start with our own statements we can do that also for the weights so we could also say its weight equals zero for instance by default and we can also do that for the, the, the name as well if we wanted to and we can also do that for the second constructor. So also there we can say, let's do that the next line to make it a little bit easier to, to catch or to, to structure. So also here we say that um, the data member, its birth year is then, and in this case we don't make it zero, but we say that this is the birth year parameter that is provided already. And also that kind of allows us to um, get rid of or get rid of these errors that would ha happen, and in that case would allow us still to have a constant right here. So that is the the ideal way of dealing with it, because conceptually a cat's birth year is not going to change anymore. So once we make this cat, this, we create this instance, we don't need to change that anymore. So we create a constant. And to make sure that we can um, define this constant or we can uh, set a value to this constant at the, the, the creation time, so when the constructor is being called, we can't do this in the compound statement, we have to do it over here. So for bird year, we definitely do it over here. Okay. Right. So that is the example I wanted to show still. Right, so let's um, look at a bit, bit more detail. So when we initialize member variables, um, there are certain things we can't assign. Uh, we can only initialize. And uh, constant is one, I, uh, one case in that case. The last chapter we've seen also that references are a case like that. So a reference can be initialized, but you can't assign anything to a reference anymore. Um, but we've also just seen that it is possible to create constants inside your class, which are data members of your class. So the way to initialize these is by doing it this way. So we have basically just after the definition of our constructor, for instance, uh, our default constructor, for instance, the uh, data member and then the value that is assigned to it. Except that this is not really assignment, it is initialization. Now, it's a assignment would be here in the body of the constructor. All other member variables can also be done this way, but it also is possible to put them in the body of the constructor. So here is an example, uh, which is a bit more concrete and uh, uh, simple than a classic uh, than a cat example, for instance. So here we have an example class um, where we have a particular constructor over here with a variable, which is in this case a reference, and we have a constant integer and um, a reference to this, uh, to this, uh, a reference that we have our pri as private uh, data members. Now these two we cannot not assign. We can only initialize those two. 
So what would be wrong is to have them in the um, compound statement of the constructor and there change them. There the compiler would give an error because you're trying to assign a value to a constant or you're trying to assign something to a reference. So this is definitely not possible. What is possible, therefore, is doing this in the new way that we just seen. We initialize those two. And we initialize those straight after the constructor definition. So this is the way the constructor is defined. The constructor doesn't return anything. It's of the same name as the class. It has a certain set of parameters, or none if it's a default constructor. And then we can basically assign values or initialize um, constants and references to a certain value. And that way, we can use these two inside the class. Okay, the second thing that I wanted to discuss today is by, uh, copy constructors. And copy constructors are quite important because we've seen if we have, for instance, a function. Say here, in this case, a function that is very simple. We call it my function. It returns nothing or voids. And it takes a cat um, instance as a parameter. What we know now is that we, in the end, somewhere in the main function, for instance, we create a cat, then we can pass this to my function. And we know that if we pass something like an integer or a bool or a double to um, a function, then this is being copied. So the thing that we, in, that we initialized here is being copied into a new thing, passed to the function. This function may change uh, this particular object over here, but as soon as this function is um, returned, this object over here that was copied completely is then released again and not valid anymore. So if this function tries to change Frisky, it is not really changed because we're copying. Um, now, how is this possible? How do we do this inside a constructor? So the how is the thing that we're going to see first. And a copy constructor is uh, exactly the answer to this. So it's basically a constructor, just as we've seen before, but the one parameter that we're giving is a parameter of type cat, so the same type as we've already seen, and then a constant reference um, to, the, uh, to that. And what we can do then is basically uh, specify what we are going to do if, when we are going to copy. So we have here um, our cat that we reference, um, and that we call source, that's our source cat, and we're going to copy that to the current cat. So the current its age data member of the current cat for which we are creating the copy constructor is then assigned the value of the its age data member of the source that we just provided. And the same for the weight. So the weight data member of this cat that we're constructing now takes the its weight data from the source. And this copy constructor is then the way to, to have complete control over what is being copied if you have a particular class, class. So in this case, we can clone our cat. And this is what, I, what we can in, the, in this example do. Now the copy constructor is implicitly called. We don't have to always um, define this completely, but it is implicitly called, so we don't have to um, uh, call this uh, constructor by uh, in the code itself, but whenever you op, uh, you pass this type of object of type cat um, in a function, as I just seen, or when a function returns an object of type cat. In that case, we've seen already if a re function returns an integer or takes an integer as a parameter, where what it's what is really is being done is this whole thing is being copied to a second. Um, a variable that we can then work with. And it's the same for instances of a class. Now here's a quiz to make sure that you understand what is then going on. So here's an example where we have a function called function1 which takes a cat as a parameter called the cat and which returns a cat. And all it does is basically it prints something to uh, the command line or the, the console and it returns the cat that was passed back to the, 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 where the function was called. And in our main function, we are saying we're making a cat. That's what is displayed, the string that is displayed to our outputs. Then we create a cat, which is called frisky, with a particular age, 
n of a particular type. And then we uh, pass this object frisky to this function 1, get the age of this, and put that into the variable age with the integer and is then printed out. So the question now is how many cats are constructed in this piece of code and deconstructed? But the construction, I think, is the hardest part. So here there is definitely one being constructed. Uh, we have one object, frisky of type cats, and here we explicitly call a constructor. But in the past slides we've seen that there are other ways of automatically uh, calling a constructor, namely the copy constructor. And this is being used twice. So once here, because here we have frisky which is passed as a parameter to function 1. And it's not a reference or a pointer, so it's basically really something that is being copied. And it's uh, something that is happening, so as soon as we enter function 1 and we have our um, object the cat, the cat is being copied from frisky. So this is our second object that is being uh, created or constructed. So the first one is called frisky, the second one is called the cat. And in the past slide we've also seen that a function can return a cat and if that happens we also automatically call a copy constructor. So in that case we again call a copy constructor which makes, our, uh, makes for us a, 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 an object of a type the cat which is returned from this particular function. And of this cat, this object, we then get the age and put this into this integer. So in total, we've created three objects of type cat. Now, there's another way of doing this, as we've seen in chapter 7. In chapter 7, we've seen we can call by reference, and this is exactly what we can do here. So we've seen this for integers or for characters, but here we do exactly the same but for function parameters and what the functions can return. So over here, nothing has changed, as you can see. We basically have our cat frisky with a particular age. We pass this uh, to our function, but this time it's called function 2 instead of function 1, and return the age, which we put into this integer and then output to the comment line. Now, the only thing is that we use a different function here, and this function over here uses references. So it's calling by reference the cat and it's returning by reference. And what happens here is that frisky is not being copied over here. Frisky itself is being passed. So there's no copy constructor being called over here. And then we return the reference to frisky back all the way over here. So in this whole piece of code over here with function 2, we create only one instance called frisky and we operate on this particular object of type cats. Now what happens if a class does not implement a copy constructor? Because also that happens. It's simpler, uh, simple because it's exactly the same as with a default constructor. So the compiler just provides a default constructor if you don't provide one and it's the same for the copy constructor. In that case, the compiler provides a default copy constructor where it basically copies all the members that it has, all the data members and all the functions. It creates that as a blob in, in, uh, in, in our memory and copies all of that exactly to another piece of memory. Now, you could ask yourselves, so why do we ever have to implement a copy constructor? Well, the copy constructor allows you a little bit more control on how things are constructed. And in the next slides we will see that once we have, for instance, data members that are, for instance, dynamic arrays that are not of a certain size but that can resize itself, this default copy construction is really hard. And there's a couple of other instances where we really have to define ourselves how a copy constructor is made, where the default copy constructor or a shallow copy cannot perform the tasks that we want to do.